Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We thank the Lord today and give him praise. Um, morning by morning, new mercies we see and glorify his name. We thank the Lord for what he's doing around the world, for areas where uh, the coronavirus has ceased to be a scourge. Praise the Lord. For um, nations that are healing, praise the Lord. And for areas that are still um, on, we pray that our Heavenly Father will bring healing to them. And our prayer is that there will not be a resurgence of this awful virus. The Heavenly Father will have mercy on the world. Did the Lord answer our prayers? Yes, he did. And he answered. But most times is we, the individuals, when we live our life the way we want, do what we want to do and put pleasure in front of reality, then Satan takes an upper hand. I pray that everyone around the world um, will just get the wisdom um, to know what's going on and help others. Yet, some people, it will not really um, affect them. They wouldn't even know they have it. But then the vulnerable ones, it will touch them and those that will um, be very sick with it. So I pray that all over we will get to have an understanding and bear with one another. But has the Lord really dealt with it? Yes. Um, what was anticipated? Oh no, it didn't happen. Thank God for that, for sparing our lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for keeping the world. Um, mid 2020, we thought we would never see 2021. It looks like everywhere we collapse. But out of your mercy and loving kindness, you have still kept us till today. Our prayer, Lord, is that you heal the nations that are still going through the scourge of this virus. Thank you for the ones that are healed or healing. Glory be to your name. We know you perfect that which concerns us. But most importantly, Father, we pray that through these men of the world, women of the world, children of the world, we come to the knowledge of the truth. We know that thou art Elohim, that we may look up to you and bow ourselves in humility to adore you. May it be so, Lord. Speak to us through your word. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So this morning we will continue with our teaching on what Jesus said and did. And we want to look at Mark chapter 9 from verse 43 to 50 and pick out key lessons in my mind and why Jesus came into the world. Why did he come? He wouldn't tell if there's no need to come. We remember that why he came is that we might be saved. We, all of us, will be delivered out of the hand of the wicked one, of Satan, that we may know him and that we may have everlasting life. John 3, 16, the Bible says that Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And what is that everlasting life? And that's what, why we want to read the book of Mark chapter 9, 43 to 50, and then go into the book of Revelation and pick out some verses, key verses. I pray the Lord will help us because we're at a critical stage of our life, critical time in life at a because many things are like what's going on. People have given up. The day that trust the Lord shall be strong and do exploits. So this is the best time to remind ourselves again. Matthew and uh, Mark 9, 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. <clears throat> Sorry. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands go into hell. Remember our hands. We use our hands to reach out, to grab, to do, 
to put in their mouth, to do so many things. We know what our hands mean to us, to scratch ourselves, to rub our back, to reach out to things. The Bible says, if that hand that you that's what we think may be indispensable will lead you to hell, says, cut it off. This is God himself telling us, not Isaiah telling us, not Paul talking to us, not Matthew talking to us, not Elisha, not Moses, not Abraham. This is God himself saying, if this hand, the two of them, will get me into hell, I should do what? Cut it off. The things I will do with my hand, the things that I will present, if that thing I'm going to write, and after writing it, it will take me to hell, don't write it. If that thing I'm going to grab, and I grab it and it will burn my soul in hell, leave it, don't touch it. If that work I will do with my hand, and as I'm doing it at the end, the reward is hell. It says, don't do it. Leave it off. So, hands represents reaching out, grabbing, doing. The strength of a man is in his hands. Because it's with the hands you pull. It's with the hands you fight. It's with the hand you defend. It's the hand you do job. It's the hand almost indispensable. What can we do without it? But it says that thing you cannot do without, that will feed you, that will do, reach out, that is your, your extension, if it, that will take you to hell, cut it off. We'll come back to it. Let's continue um, in verse 44. It says, where the worm dieth not, and the fire in it, and the fire is not quenched. Okay? And if thy foot offend thee, Cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. The feet keeps us standing. Without the feet, we cannot stand. So whatever that represents what makes you to stand, your job, your wife, your children, your affluence, what you get, your money, your companies, your bank account, everything that you think that will make you keep standing very tall, that will give you balance, and birds will take you to hell. We are the worm in it. The physical worm we have here, if you step on it, it will die. But the worm in hell, the Bible says, not even that will die. What does the leg represent to us? It represents... The leg takes you to places. So that place where you will go and you end up to hell. The Bible says, end up in hell. The Bible says, do not go. We use the, our legs to exercise, to keep, to, uh, to kick, to run. Is just the leg and it's the leg. If you don't have the leg, you're limited in life. Actually, that's what takes us to everywhere. So how can I be without it? That's what takes me to get my food. That's what takes me to the farm. That's what takes me to work. That's what takes me everywhere is the food. Even driving is the food. Thank God for some electric cars. We don't need the legs anymore to go with. It's everything is just in the hand. But right now, the Bible has talked about the hand and now has talked about the feet. It says if two of them will take you to hell. You can, I'm, I'm believing the Lord that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. Telling you what legs represents, what your hands represent. He says, cut them off. Intentionally cut it off. It's not cut off by accident. It's not cut off by disease. It's not cut off by anything. You intentionally, and you can ask me, how can I cut myself? It will be quite painful. I can't even think about it to take life and do what? What if I bleed to death? But it's as serious as that. And Jesus continued. He says, that having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. I hope I'm speaking to someone today. 
because everything around us, the lures of life, they are gripping so strong and it looks like without them, we cannot breathe. Without them, we cannot live. But right now, we can believe the Lord to take them off. And he says there, where their warm diet not, and the fire is not quenched. Their fire not quenched is for everlasting to everlasting. Verse 47. And if thy eye offend thee, your eye, your eye offend thee, plug it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. It is better for you to do what? Cast that eye. The eye is a gate. I remember when Destiny was 10. If you just ask him, you know, to preach any message, he would just come and says, let's talk about the ten um, um, six senses. The eye is a gate. The ear is a gate. The mouth is a gate. The Bible says, yeah, the eyes. If you go blind, what else? You can't see. You wouldn't know what is going on. But the Bible says, if that eye that you have will lead you to see being eyes filled with adultery, the eyes that will go to see with things, see corruption, see mother, those eyes that when you see it, it goes into the heart and corrupt the heart. It's with the eyes that you could get good things for yourself. And Jesus is saying, plug it out. Is it possible to plug my eyes out? What will I use? Is it a hook or a knife? I can't even think about that. But Jesus is saying, that thing that will lead you, you will see. And it takes your heart. It takes, consumes your body. You can't come out of it anymore. It becomes a chain to put you down in one way. It doesn't matter the prayers, the, the word you heard, the, the Lord speaking. You are so adamant because you are not convinced. Jesus says, plug it out. That having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, we are the warm diet not, and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will it season? Will ye season it? Have salt in yourself, and have peace one with another. Amen. Have salt in myself. The Lord is saying, grace, have salt in yourself before I can look at another person. If my salt, if I lose my saltness, there's actually no need. Now let's go into this to explain what Jesus was saying in the book of Mark chapter 9. If you read it, you might be wondering. But if you relate it to Matthew chapter 23, 24, and 25, it will make more meaning. When Jesus said, there will be gnashing of and weeping, gnashing of teeth and weeping, the worm in it dieth not. He was talking about hellfire. Brethren, it is real. And that's why Jesus came. That's why he came, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible talked about Satan as the God of this world, the pleasures of life, the lust of the eyes, the cares of this life. And that's why John 1 says, friendship with the world is an enmity with the Christ, is an enmity with Christ and with God. We should not go into them is not for him so he says the things of this world they are there to take us away the pleasures and the fun they are temporal they are temporal taking drugs and one is feeling high is no pleasure it cannot be a pleasure not at all adultery and fornication cannot be pleasure at all leading others to sin being an offense where others see you and they lost cannot be pleasure. Killing other people, a mother, cannot be 
pleasure, disobedience to God and to parents and to what we're doing cannot be pleasure, not at all. Hatred cannot be pleasure, not at all. Wantoning in sin and being naked cannot be pleasure at all. Now, brethren, Jesus says, all these things Satan has put in front of us and then will cause our legs to take us there, cause our hands to reach out to grab them, cause our eyes to see them. And he is saying, in all these, remember, if you hit to him, he will take you to where the worm in it die not. Let's look at the temptation of our Lord Yeshua Jesus. And see how Satan came to tempt him in the book of Matthew chapter 4. It will make more meaning to us. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 4. And let us see. And then um, the verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. And seated him on Matthew 4, 5. And seated him on the pinnacle of the temple and he said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself out he did that temptation and jesus said to him get thee behind me but verse 8 again the devil said unto him the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. And this is where I want to go. And the glory. It looks like his glory. The things we see there. The high parties. It's summer right now. All in the west. So it's all festival here. Festival here. Festival here. And it's going to be drugs. Wine. Women. Adultery. Fornication. All kinds. Worship of Satan. Everywhere. It's summer now. It's time to go to the beaches, to go and naked and then let the world and others feast on your body and you feast on them. And that is what is it. It's now summer now, it's time to go naked on the streets, wear a very tiny, flimsy little bikini and nothing on top. And then tie and show off life of fornication, adultery, indecency. We all know what an indecent life is. This has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with whether you believe or not. The average man on the street knows what is indecent. The average man on the street knows what we should not be doing. Our conscience know it is not. But because their hearts are so hardened that men are walking up on the street so indecent, just like the animal in their hands. That could not discern between right and wrong. God has given us wisdom. God has made us beautiful. He's given us dominion over those things. Let's not bring ourselves low. Intentionally low to the level of nothing. As if we cannot reason again. It's summer now. So many things. It's just like hell let loose. Hell let loose. Let's not go there. If you go, they say, we are the one in it. The glory of this world. What is the glory of this world? Money, money, money. The money, all the expensive cars, expensive houses, shoes, watches, dresses, all kinds, houses. Tell me. All over. And it's all there glamorously displayed. You look through the magazines. It looks like your own world is not in this. Now. You need to get them. You need to look like A. You need to look like B. You need to get these to be like the Joneses. All the glory of them. Shown all over. I need to travel to this country. I need to be there. I've not seen this. I need to do this. See this country and all that. A lot of people had gone. They didn't come back. Physically, they may have been back. Spiritually, they lost it. The glory. What is this glory all about? What will be destroyed? What will go into hellfire? That where the womb in it dieth not. That's what Satan tried to show Jesus. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou fall down and worship me. And then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. 
for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. May we not worship him. So when we are reading the book of Mark, chapter 9, from verse 43, we will understand why the book of Revelation, chapter 19, 20, 21, and 22, why will I exchange Revelation chapter 20 to hellfire? No way. I will not do that. Look at such a beautiful place. And I saw the angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. There's a bottomless pit in the book of um, um, Revelation chapter 20. If you want to know it, if you are doubting if there's a bottomless pit, the Lord has given us a little view into what the world looks like. And I will tell you, go on, on your YouTube, go on the NASA channel. You will see everything you need to see. But the Bible says, Jesus said, seeing they will not see. They watch this, but they have not sat down. The great philosophers to say, what does this mean? The great thinkers, what does this mean? What is it all? They are still blinded, even with everything we are seeing. That the earth is hanging out there, with, filled with darkness all over. The sun is out there, the mass is out there, all the planets out there, and the thousands and millions we cannot measure. All hanging in where? In darkness. Look around them, bottomless pit bottomless pit if anything happens as the bible says in the book of revelation when this earth will be gone and there will not be any more ocean where do you think they are going sure when this present air will be let go it will keep falling to where into that outer darkness bottomless pit he showed us what it is but where are we going Revelation chapter 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, out prepared as the bride had done for her husband. Wonderful, beautiful place to read, brethren. And then he, the Bible says there, and I had a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with them, that they shall be the, uh, his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away their tears. The tears of what you think you didn't get here on earth. You didn't get the glamours. You didn't get the fairy wealth. That will come and go and disappear. The life very short. Very short. You wouldn't know how short it is until you get to 60. And it looks like wow. Until you get to my age at 54. And it looks like what? Had it gone so quick? So while you're young, you still think there is, it's, it, it's, um, in, it's everlasting. Until you get to that age and you look back. You see that it's been quite a while, very short time, nothing, with all the toils, with all the sweating, with all the weeping, with all the diseases, with all the disappointments, with all the pain, with all the anguish, with all the toiling, with all everything, vanity, but here you go, it says, and God shall wipe away all their tears, all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow amen nor crying amen neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away this one we are the rolling world going around swinging us around we pass away the rivers and the oceans we're seeing now the tsunamis and the mountains we are experiencing and all the um fires and all the volcanoes and all the viruses name them whatsoever will be passed away hallelujah so if these eyes of seeing iniquity will lead me to hell i'll plug it off it's not worth it not at all this is the reason why jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly in him Let's continue. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
This chair I'm sitting now will be gone. The present tree at my back garden will be gone, brethren. Everything, this dress will be gone. This flesh will be put on because it's mortal and we will put on immortality. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus is saying. This is where he's coming from. You know, if you just read this in isolation, you would think, oh, this is an hard saying. What does it mean? Does it mean we don't have to enjoy here on earth and all those things? He says, hang on. What you think is enjoyment is nothing. Look at the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Write it so that grace can read it. Write it so that my brethren can read it. So that we will know what will it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul. So that we will know and live righteously in this present world. So that we will know and stand on the goodness and what he has done for us. And he says unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and I am Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. This is where we are going, brethren. So there's no need allowing the pleasures of this life, the fashions and all the toil and the pain and the sicknesses to take our eyes away. Leave those things. They are all temporal. We're doing them for the time being, but they will not consume our heart. We will, we will not ever be sold into them or to them. And verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, all these things all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son this is the ultimate this is the reason of being born again this is why we're driving up and this should make our heart merry this should make our heart joyful brethren we're not going to hurry this because when it comes to this great place we just jump apostle have been teaching about it for a long time and i've been talking up on it brethren if you can listen but for the purpose of digging deep series we are going to relate Mark chapter 9 to Revelation 20, 21 and 22. We'll continue tomorrow in the morning. Please come on. Let's get it. Satan is trying to blind our eyes. He's trying to show us the beauties of this life. What we call beauty are transient. They will disappear in a moment. He's trying to make us relax. When actually we're on a journey. We can't stay back on a bus stop. We've not got to our destination. He's trying to give us counterfeit. Fake. Brethren, we need to stand strong. And until we understand these. And read them thoroughly. So this class, we're going to again outline them as we read. Why Jesus said, if this hand will lead you to hell. Cut it off. The lake. That burn it with fire and brimstone in the bottomless pit. What will you go there to do? For everlasting. No death in there. You look for death, it will not come. You look for water, you will not come. It will, you wouldn't see it. You will look for bed. Of course, there's no bed to lie on. The demons will be there to torment day and night and the fire scourging because of what? One lie. Because of what? One compromise. Because of what? Brethren, what? If you will not go to heaven with me, Satan, I, of course you can't come to heaven. Brethren, if you won't go to heaven with me, I'm not coming to hell with you. I'm not going to let anyone, or the things I see, or the, where my legs takes me, or what my hands reaches out to. We'll continue in the morning. Father, we pray, Lord, for your grace. You've written this out in the word and in the scriptures for us to follow. Lord, help us not to get hardened. Help us not to push these things under the carpet. Let us not to see them, oh, have they come again, scaremongering? No, but help us to look at what you have for us. And that will encourage us. The beauty of heaven, the eternal life, the glory Precious Father, help each and every one of us. As we see these, we know the price is worth paying. 
not just seeing them precious father as we study open our eyes to see the futility of the world we are in and not to sell ourselves to it but to hold it with loose hand thank you father for we know you have an answer our prayers in Yeshua Jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah please remember to share his glory goes with us in a time like this we just need to encourage one another we just need to help each other to make it i was reading the book of matthew chapter 25 today and it touched my heart when jesus was explaining what will happen where men will weep and gnash their teeth let's each other he says pray that your flight be not in winter he was telling us things that will happen he says there will be diverse sicknesses wars and rumors of wars hunger and pestilences nations rising against the nation this is the time that the believers will get it right and when i was reading this morning again he took me to he says that let him as john was saying the bible says here in the book of revelation chapter 22 verse 11 he that is unjust let him be unjust still he that is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he struck me we can't stop the same all our brethren let's continue to be righteous this book is like or this memoir is like iron sharpening iron telling us stand strong please every believer need to read these stories and let's get strong remember www.assuringgrace.org right on the home page to download for yourself and by the grace of god keep praying with us we are working on the translations which will be uploaded at the same time so that you can get it in english and other languages at the same time and also pray along with us we need readers that can read those languages and even in english so that we can uplo upload them and people can, and the audio sorry audio versions of all the translations and this is a huge piece of work going on but we cannot stop until we encourage every brethren. We have to stop. Especially the persecuted church or brethren in persecuted countries. Please send this memoir to them. It will help them to stand strong. May the good Lord bless you. Amen.